Hey team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Today I want to look at some core concepts on the foundations of reading exam. These are core ideas that you're going to need to understand. We'll start with phonological awareness. On all the reading exams, phonological awareness and phonemic awareness is a major, major cornerstone. On the foundations of reading exam, your phonological and phonemic awareness questions are going to make up at least 10 of those questions. So it's this, it's this big, big idea. And it has to do with sound. So let's write that down. Phonological awareness has to do with the ability to hear sound. And we call those sounds phonemes. And in English, there are 44 phonemes. You're going to have a lot of questions involving phonological awareness. And can a, a child or preschooler hear the sounds in the English language? Because we know that hearing the sounds is going to help with decoding and encoding activities. And basic, it's a fundamental building block for literacy development. So, so you're going to have a lot of questions involving does a child have basic, intermediate, and advanced phonological awareness? So let's take a moment and think about phonological awareness so that ability to hear sounds and think about it in terms of activities or tasks. These are things we could ask a student to do to sort of measure if they've attained that level of phonological awareness. So let's think about it. There are lots of tasks or activities that measure phonological awareness, and we can break them into three levels, the word, syllable, and phoneme level. The word level for phonological awareness is very basic. These are activities involving preschoolers and it involves hearing similarities and differences in words. For example, when reading a rhyming text to a student and you say mouse, house, mouse and house are considered rhyming words. A child that can hear that mouse, house sounds similar, well this would be making an observation of sounds on a word level. This would be basic phonological awareness. Let's look at a second example. Let's say we're reading a rhyming text, a poem, or a Dr. Seuss book, and we have a, a, a passage where there's repetition of the initial sound in words, or, or a poem like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Well, this poem or rhyming text, if it has examples of words with an initial sound that's the same, the P sound in Peter and Piper and picked, well, this would be an example of alliteration. If a preschooler could hear similarities in the beginning of words, or hear the examples of alliteration, they would be demonstrating basic phonological awareness. So rhymes and alliteration and any activity or task involving hearing rhymes and alliteration in oral language, this is basic phonological awareness. There's a third one. If the teacher asks a student to count the number of words they hear in a sentence, for example, if the teacher says to the class, how many words do you hear in this sentence? How are you? and the student's able to say, I hear, how are you, three words in that sentence, well, this would be segmenting the words within oral language within a sentence, identifying how many they are. This is a, a third activity, and it falls under basic phonological awareness. Any of these activities in basic phonological awareness, whether it has to do with hearing rhymes or alliteration in words, or being able to count the words they hear in oral language, this would all be on a word level, and it would all be considered basic phonological awareness. Let's take an activity that measures intermediate phonological awareness. Let's say we ask a student to clap out how many syllables they hear within a word like wonderful. And the child says, I hear wonderful. Oh, I hear three syllables. Or how many syllables do you hear in the word Monday? Monday. Two syllables. Or the word magazine? Magazine. Three syllables. Now remember, a syllable, when you think of a syllable, this is the smallest part of a word that has its own unique vowel sound. In the word wonderful, it has three parts that have a unique vowel sound. One, der, full. A child that can identify how many vowel sounds or how many syllables are within a word has intermediate phonological awareness. It's a little bit more advanced than just telling that a word has a similar ending or similar beginning. Now they're breaking up the word and identifying the individual vowel sounds within that word or the syllables within that word. So a little bit harder. Now let's look at the most advanced level. This involves hearing phonemes and we call this phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the advanced piece of phonological awareness. It's involving hearing, identifying, isolating, manipulating individual phonemes in a word. It's more than just telling that words are similar. And it's more than just breaking up a word into its different syllables. It's taking every part of the word, every syllable, and isolating and identifying the individual sounds within that syllable, within that word. 
let's look a little closer at phonemic awareness, that top level of phonological awareness. We could break phonemic awareness, this advanced part of phonological awareness, up into six activities. We have number one, phoneme segmentation. Number two and three, blending and segmenting. Four and five, involving adding and deleting phonemes within a word. And six, substituting phonemes within a word. Each one of these could be part of a specific scenario-based question testing your awareness of phonemic awareness. So let's, let's think about each one. Starting with phoneme isolation. If we had a word like cat, you could ask a child to identify the initial phoneme of that word cat. And they would say, what's the first sound you hear? K and cat. Or the end phoneme of the word cat, the last sound you hear. They would say t in cat, I hear t. Or what is the middle sound you hear in the word cat? In cat, you hear a a, short a. Okay, these all involve isolating a sound within that word. Now you'll notice that there could be another variation of this question involving onset and rhyme. So let's clarify that. An onset and rhyme question has to do with the beginning and end of a word. So the onset within a given syllable is that first sound. So k is the onset of cat. And the rhyme is the at, the end sound in the word. Onset and rhyme questions fall under basic phonemic awareness. It's involving some aspect of isolating parts of that word, isolating phonemes of that word. Now let's look at blending and segmenting. A little harder. Can a child take a word like cat and blend and segment the, all the individual sounds that make up that word? Like cat is made up of a k, a, t. Here we've segmented the individual phonemes, k, a, t. And now we blend them together, k, a, t, cat. All right. So in this one right here, it's not just the beginning, end, or middle sound. It's all the sounds, identifying all the sounds in a word, and then blending them together to say that word correctly, cat. Now let's go to the manipulation piece. So anything involving phoneme manipulation is always advanced phonemic awareness. These are activities that, that really test that student with being able to work with individual sounds in a word and change them to form other words, like with deleting, if we, if we deleted the C in cat, we get at. Okay, so we've taken out a sound, formed a new word. Or substituting, we could take the K sound and change it to a B to form bat. Or adding, like we could take the word ram and add a P to it, get ramp. Okay, so these are all different scenarios involving manipulating sounds with or phonemes within a word. A little bit more advanced. So within phonemic awareness, this ability to hear and identify and manipulate individual phonemes in a word, there could be a possible six different activities that could appear on the multiple choice, which means you need to be aware of not just what phonemic awareness is, but what are all the activities or tasks that measure phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness and phonological awareness are major ideas on the foundations of reading and reading specialist exams. So make sure you're aware of all the different types of scenarios and activities involving these two major ideas. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. If you like this video, press the like button below or subscribe to our channel. This allows us to do more videos for teachers on their teacher certification exams. And if you need additional help, you can come and check out a Go Academy workshop or webinar or tutoring. You go to www.goacademy.com. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.